Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. Yeah, we gon' talk, we gon' have fun. We be on fire, we be lit lit. It's a unique hustle. Check it, check it, check it. It's unique hustle. It's your boy ECO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing official, Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Nothing, nothing, you know, my dear. Well, go on. I want y'all to stop what you're doing right now. Go like, subscribe, follow us on all social media platforms. I mean, our Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, Snapchat, you name it, we're on it. Even threads. You know, y'all just not getting on threads, but you need to go go ahead and follow us. I'm sorry. On threads. You hear what he just did? But anyway. <laughs> um, and also, Patreon and on our YouTube membership. That's where you find all our full-length interviews. If you want to see them right before he start clipping them, Go ahead and subscribe for our membership package, and that's the way you can see them right before the clips start coming out. Because you know once the cl clips start coming, they keep coming, all right? Hey, man, guys, man, y'all heard what she said. Y'all know she's serious when she says something, because I've been listening to her for 20 years. Been a long time coming. Mm. How you doing? I'm fantastic. All right, man. We got a special guest in here today, y'all. We're going to talk about money, making a lot of money losing a lot of money, figuring out a way to come up with situations to where you can have a vision to come plainly clear right in the front of you. We got a young lady here who is going to explain to us her journey, and she's got a blueprint. Yeah, Blueprint University is going down, man, entrepreneurship. Yes, sir. Kayla, Sheree is in the building. Hey, y'all. That's how I do it. Hey, y'all. Okay. <laughs> How you doing? I'm good. How you doing? Man, you know, I'm really, you know, I'm well rested, really, even though I've been up all night. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm just wanting to keep going, man. I just, you know, every time I, I come on this show, I just thank God for having, you know, just the energy. You know what I'm saying? The synergy, the the mm. the, the go get, you know what I'm saying? Um, so and and like I said, man, it's it's a blessing, absolute honor and a pleasure to have you on the show. Um you Definitely got a lot to talk about, a lot to share with our listeners. Yes. Make sure you guys like and subscribe to the channel, man, because at the end of the day, you got to share it, too. Because if you don't share it, then YouTube definitely won't sometimes. So you got to share it. But at any rate, man, we're going to get into it like we do it. Miss Jamaica, what you got to say today? I want to know about... Your upbringing. I want to know, born and raised, you were born and raised in California? Yes, yeah, SoCal, Southern California. I'm an IE baby, suppose. So I grew up all over the Inland Empire, California. That's me. Um, I went to school in Las Vegas. So mm. I lived in Vegas as well. And then I moved here to Dallas. So Which one you like better, Vegas or California? Ooh, California. Why? Vegas was cool, but it was... Mm, it was just for a short period of time. So How old were you when you moved to Vegas? Um, 18. 18. So, yeah. Okay, so you were at the age where you still, you know, not gambling yet, but, you know, still can go party and have a good time and stuff partying. like that. I was still partying. still was partying. Still partying before 21. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> no, because when I've been to Vegas many times, and when I think about with the kids, especially if you have young kids, I don't see Vegas having a lot to do for young kids. It's always the older people. Yeah, it is. It's a party city. That's why I don't think it's a place. It's a lot of retired people that live there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, some people, you know, they're moving there with their families, but I don't see it as a family-oriented right. state. Like, right. it's just somewhere, you know, you go. I guess a lot of people from California are moving there, you know, because it's cheaper. Mm, um, it is. It's, yeah, it's a lot cheaper. Wow. So it's more affordable. Okay. But as far as growth, me staying there, it wasn't for me. But California is more of a family-oriented place, but... Yep. When people hear about California, yeah, you hear about the beaches, but you also hear about the violence, the gangs, all of that sort of stuff. Um, did you experience or see any of that growing up as a child in California? No, not really. I didn't. Um, my parents kind of kept me away from that life. Mm. So I'm more of a more of in the, I guess, suburbs, you should say. Okay. But, um, I grew up, you know, just regular lifestyle uh we ran i ran track for 14 years so wow. i did a what? lot of that what, yeah. what, what did you run uh, everything like what what, what meters 400 what? hurdles were you good 100 yeah what was your time god <laughs> oh, you know when the crowd go Ooh. my specialty was shot put i was a shot put. oh you like the shot put? yeah I was mm. a shot so put. running was just you know um that was just something I, you know, they made me do. So, but you it was good. Brothers it kept, and sisters. Um, yes, I do. I have. Um, I have an older brother. Mm -hmm. um, I have an older brother, older sister. I have a younger brother. Um, yeah. And so you it. right in the middle. Yeah, right in the middle. I'm okay. My, I'm my mom's baby. I'm my dad's middle child. Ah. Yeah. So mama spoil you. 
Yeah, a little bit. You can say that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And um, so California, so you were raised, okay, so if you say you're your mom's baby, but your dad's middle child. So were you raised in the household with your mom and dad? No. Um, I think I was about six, mm -hmm. mom and dad, and then we kind of, um, then I was just with my mom and my mm. brother. Um, then it was just, you know, me, my mom, and my brother for some time. My mom did get married, so, um, you know. How she old was, were you when she got married? Uh, ten, ten, but they had been together for some time before that. Okay. So I did have um, two other siblings as well living mm -hmm. in the home. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. Oh, yeah. So how did, for a female, because I know I've heard a lot of males tell me their stories about broken homes and how it was, you know, especially with another man, a stepdad coming mm -hmm. to play and you're not my daddy type of thing and all of that sort of stuff. How was it being um, a young girl and at first you had your mom and dad in the household, then the broken, you know, family, and then now here it comes another man saying that, not to say that he's your dad, but yeah. another male influence in your life. Tell me about that transition and what um, it's like. It was, I don't know, I was young. I didn't really think too much about it um, then, you know, I guess as a kid. Um, but he was supportive. He was there. It wasn't like one of those situations to where, you know, you felt out the norm or, you know, like sometimes, you know, your parents get married to other, mm -hmm. you know, spouses and they're not supportive of, you know, separate right. kids. So it wasn't like that. He was very supportive. That's one of the reasons why I ran track for so long because he was, okay. you know, a track coach. That's good. And so it, it instilled a lot of discipline into mm -hmm. us. Um, and, you know, he was there. It was just regular. Were know, you able to see your father, your biological father during that time? Yeah. Was he still in your life? Were you visiting him, all of that? Yeah, we, I did visit him from time. Um, but, yeah, we, we visited, you know, from time to time. Okay. Yeah. So, um, eight, so now, okay, so when you moved from, um, you say you moved at 18 to yeah. Vegas, did you move by yourself? At yeah. 18? Um, I went just for college. Just so, for college? Yeah, I studied at um, UNLV, okay. University um, of Nevada, Las Vegas. So mm -hmm. um, I went there for pre-med. That was my... Um, that's what I, you wanted to do. Yeah, that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to be a neurologist. That was Ooh. my thing. I really thought I was going to um, pursue that career. Mm -hmm. uh, I still sometimes have a desire in my heart, too, but it's just like once I touched the entrepreneurship world, I couldn't... I couldn't so what distracted <laughs> you? Because you went to school for that, but you didn't complete that. No, I did. So you did? I, I have, I have okay. a um, BA in biology. <laughs> but it's like I don't use it. So, it's, mm -hmm. you know, it's not relevant to what right. I'm doing now. But my time um, while I was in school, I did. Um, let's see. I went in my first year, did the normal freshman, freshman year mm -hmm. party because in high school, I focused I was like I'm, I'm, I've always been ahead of my age so I felt like when I went into that first year freshman year I had to I was like okay let me You're live the yourself. life unwind right. and do what these people tell me I'm supposed to be doing that was a crappy show because when you know when you first get a taste of the world of partying, partying. and experiencing you do too much you know it's kind of like when you got those strict parents and they be like, you can't go nowhere. When you let them off the leash, it's a Don't tell up. me that my baby is about to go to college. <laughs> she about to go to Brown University in Rhode Island all the way up there by herself. Yeah. And I already know. I said, don't, don't, don't throw away your first year, yeah. okay? Partying and doing all of that. I'm not saying you can't go have a good yeah, time. Yeah. But you got to balance. Yeah. Because you can set yourself back mm -hmm. if you just do all that partying. Because if you party, you're going to want to sleep. Yeah. And you're going to missing Shit, classes yeah. and doing all sorts of stuff. Definitely. So did that set you back? That yeah. Year? I, well, I took on 18 credits my first year. Mm. Horrible mistake. Like, That's a lot. Horrible. If I would have known, I would have did 12. You know, because, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's a new environment. You go right. in. Now I'm living in a dorm. You know, I'm not used to living with people because, you know, it's just me and my mom mm -hmm, <laughs> mm -hmm. towards the end of my last few years. And it was different. Um, so I did take on a lot with school and then also, you know, trying to make friends and mm -hmm. be kind of somebody who I wasn't um, being out in that party scene. Yeah, it was stuff. a lot of pressure mm -hmm. but came on. But I ended up coming back to my senses, you know. The second and, year. The second year, yeah. Going into my second year because first year was hard. Um, I think second, yeah, some second semester, you know. Um, I had a lot of downfalls, a lot of challenges, a lot of, you know, 
breakdowns, you know. What's the biggest? Tell me about an incident in um, college that you think that that is the biggest downfall or that's the biggest incident that happened that was very challenging, but how you overcame it? Because there's a lot of people listening who are going off to college and, you know, not sure how to handle certain things. One thing, I was a straight A student coming out of high school, so that's mm-hmm. why I had an academic scholarship. And when Sound I went, familiar? Mm-hmm. when I saw my first C on my <laughs> my freshman year, I was like suicidal. Like what? Like me? This is crazy. I was so depressed, so mm-hmm. depressed. Like what? How did this happen? But you know, you know how it happened right. because you out here trying to be turned up in the streets like (laughs) exactly and go to school but that wasn't you so you know I had to come back to reality and um really try to you know work myself so you pulled yourself back up or did you have like a teacher who spoke to you and you know motivate you or you just did it really myself because you know I always had the pressure upon myself like people be like who are you trying to please like even my mom's like who are you trying to please like you already people were already proud of you like you don't have to do over exceed and over excel but it was just always on, you know, I always had that pressure. So I was really like my own person. I still mm-hmm. am to this day. Like, I'd be like, no, Kayla, you got to go harder. It's just, you know, I'm never satisfied in, with anything that I personally do. Mm-hmm. So um, so it's not like anybody you want to hear tell you I'm proud of you. No, not really. Okay. I don't have that. I don't look for that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> just checking because it does make sense because a lot of people will be like because we see situations all the time and just like you say you know your daddy he was there but he wasn't there and stuff like that so people would look at that and be like maybe that's who you're looking for you know especially being a girl yeah because girls are usually always daddy's the girl in some sort of way even if he wasn't there or was there mm-hmm. you know what i mean so sometimes that's who you want to watch movies what do you see it's always the yeah. daddy that, you know, the girl is trying to please and so forth. Yeah. So that's the reason why a lot of people probably ask that question. Yeah. And I probably, I guess maybe because I didn't have that, maybe I created exactly. my own, you know, little space and, you know, tried to do that myself, you know, mm-hmm. like just keep pushing. Like, you know, even through high school, like I went, I did a nursing program. So I had my nursing license out of high school. Wow. So like I always, and I was in every honors class, every mm. AP class I could take. I was just always trying to be, you know, something. I worked a full-time job, you know. So like, um, I don't know, I was just always, you know, I was trying to overdo it, I guess. So when was the first taste of entrepreneurship? Okay, so back to, so freshman year, I went through that, went through a hard little time. Um, sophomore year, it was my sophomore year of high school, uh, I'm sorry, sophomore year of college. Um, how'd I get into it? But you I got partying out of your system real quick. Yeah, I got partying out of if, if, if you definitely, at a sophomore year, you already bringing the pain when it comes down to business. You're yeah. ready to go. Yeah. I, I like it. Because it was like, you know, that summer, I was like, okay, it's time to get back to the grind. Like, you know, you had your little year. Got out your system, now it's time, you know, to get back focused. And, you know, I thought, you know, school, I did do 12 credits my sophomore year, first year, because I was mm-hmm. like, you know, I'm not going to set myself up for yeah, failure. Yeah, it didn't set you back that much. Yeah. Because that's good. And it wasn't like I failed a whole bunch of classes. It was just like I didn't do, do what failed. I what normally you knew do. you could do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So um, I, um, then I proceeded with that. And then um, I met, I had met someone and, um, that was I had met uh, my I call her like my grandma now because she was an older white lady. We had came into contact with this 106 square foot building, and she didn't have nothing to do. It, was, it says right by McCarran Airport in Vegas. Mm-hmm. So really? mm-hmm. yeah, I was like, so I really had goals to kind of buy that building from her eventually. Yeah. Um, so I was like, you know what? Let me take over this building, invest in it. I was gonna make it like an African American Chinatown. Mm. Um, so I was I had, I had oh I had perfect credit. Where coming that out. idea came from? I don't know. Um, I, I can't even tell you. I was just like, you know how like you step on property of somewhere and then you're just like, what it can I do with you. this? And it just spoke, you know? So it was just like, okay, I think I can make something out of this because it has potential, mm-hmm. you know, um, all these spaces. And, you know, and I was like, you know, our our community don't have a lot of black businesses thriving, especially in Vegas. Like mm-hmm. the one person in Vegas probably owns the whole strip yeah. there. Right. Right. Like <laughs> there's not a lot of opportunity there. So um, especially now being in the South, I'm like, you see more black businesses and that's even why would it spoke to me to move here, especially yeah. from Vegas. Man, we're glad to have you. Yeah. Thank but you. I'm going to tell you, I'm proud of you not to cut into your story, but I'm just so, and I want you to finish what you was talking about, but proud of you that you even 
thought that way. You're in Vegas. There's a lot of lights out there. There's a lot of influential things going on out there. We go out there, been going out there for years, every six months or so for magic. And I'm just telling you, it's a lot of influence. And I stayed out there yeah. too as a youngster. So I definitely get it, man. It's crazy. But for you to even be making these moves mentally at that age, you should be proud of yourself. Keep going. Thank you. Um, so, you know, I stepped foot. I was like, let me, you know, turn this into African American Chinatown. I had perfect credit. Going out of high school, I was, I was like, I got a 760. So they giving me credit cards left and right. Um, so I had access to, you know, funding. Um, so I was like, well, let me invest into some businesses. Um, we had a tax company. Um, I invested into that. We also had, um, darn, what is it? A car wash. Wow. Car wash. Oh, when you um, say we, you mean you and that lady that you were talking about or somebody else? Uh, me and my, I had a business partner at the time too okay. that came in, um, but they didn't have the, they didn't have the funds. They didn't have the credit cause they were, um, they were foreign. Okay. So they didn't have, you know, that aspect of it, but I brought that. Mm -hmm. um, anywho, I ended up, you know, we invested into that, to those businesses and um, a lot of the partnerships didn't go well. So at this time I leveraged too much, you know, I'm still in school, I'm trying to keep up, not really getting a lot of, not seeing no return in anything, but I'm out there hustling like for the, for the, um, for the car wash, I'm out getting the contracts for them. Cause I'm like, you know, people they're like, oh, I got this mobile detailing business and it's just mobile detail. And I'm thinking way larger. Okay, now you need to pull up to, um, you know, car rental places. We need to get you contracts with car dealerships. Everybody like make it bigger than what it is. I got us a space at um, the South Las Vegas outlets. So mm -hmm. like we had a space set up there as well. Um, so, you know, I put all these things into play partnership went sour they ended up stealing from us they weren't paying employees so i had to cut the car i had to cut the partnership basically and now i'm stuck with a car wash because i'm like i didn't invest all my money into this i still need to make a return and you know it's already going out and put my name on the line so you know i gotta kind of keep it up um so you know i ran that that was very challenging but i learned a lot from it you know sometimes i'd be like oh if i would have never did this i Probably wouldn't have failed. But, but you know, the day in but, and day out was a lot of lessons learned. You basically are leveraging off of that today. Yeah. Like things that you experience early on are, are just springboards into what God is going to take you into next. So right. I think that's live that you even started at that age in college, still doing your thing, mm -hmm. and then was able to finish. I think that's that's really nice. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you should be proud of yourself because a lot of youngsters, that's what I, something I told my daughter. Mark Zuckerberg and them went to Harvard, but they didn't finish because they outgrew Harvard. Yeah. When you're great and when you're special, you can outgrow the situation. It don't matter. No teacher can't teach certain things that God have in Amen. store for you. Mm -hmm. So you you basically, you cannot put blinders on. You have to experience what I like. I love what you're doing and what you're saying mm -hmm. because it shows that you had a vision and you knew I can be great in whatever I decide to do. And it's hard. Right. Because a lot of people don't see that. They're yeah. just trying to figure it out the whole four years, trying to, you know, mm -hmm. they come back and they don't even do what they're even taking up, of course. But at the end of the day, for you to start early, I think that's that's dope. Yeah. Yeah. But, but um, like, now, I want to talk about the uh, Blueprint University, like, like getting to Texas. We got to get to Texas. Okay. Because yeah. we're in Texas. Yeah, we got forward. you now, you know. <laughs> I don't want to just keep you at UNLV. I don't want to keep you in Vegas on the strip at Las Vegas Boulevard, Flamingo. I don't want to just keep you over there uh, um, at, uh, I wonder if it was M&M's there back then. It, I don't know. Is, <laughs> is, I don't want to keep you there. I want, to, I want to bring you to Texas, man. How did you end up moving to Texas? Okay, so fast forward. Well, we skipped a little, lot of important parts. Well, let's go back. That led to Texas. But you, well, well, let's go back. I want right, to get that. Just, we're just going to fast forward a little bit. So anyways, yeah. you know. I'm, you know, dealing with employees. Ain't that hard? That. Yeah. That's I'm the having, hardest part. I'm in class. They calling me this <laughs> broke. Da, da, da. <laughs> I'm like, what? Like, <laughs> I'm 19 years old. Got 30, 40 year old employees wow. calling me. And How many employees did you have at the car? I wash? had 15. Wow. Mm -hmm. So yeah. you had to pay them. Yeah. You had them on a, did you have them on, on a, like the unemployment and all they could do all of that? Yeah. <laughs> you know, we did. You could have did a 1099, right? I know. I, I know that now. 
Okay, because it, because and especially because Nevada is um, the state right to work state, so you don't even have they don't That's have right. laws like same, same as Texas. Texas yeah. is like that. So you know, if I would have known at that, will state, yeah, at will them W two employees it was ten ninety nine. Yeah, well, they would have been ten ninety nine for sure. <laughs> Because I think <laughs> because they quit in a heartbeat. They're like, come one day and don't come back. We started off doing that. We was trying to do it the right way, and we kept saying, "What the heck is going mm -hmm. on?" And everybody and I started telling me, I'll never forget a girl worked here at this store, and I told her, I said, if "You can't stay." I think it was like, if it, it, it was like you need to stay at least a week or two weeks mm -hmm. to get a pay. You can't just leave. Yeah. And then she was like, she got mad when she quit. I was like, look. I really had you under the sub minimum wage law, right. you know, because <laughs> you, know, you ain't even old enough to be working like this. Uh -huh. There are so many legalities. If you really study, mm -hmm. you will know the different ins and outs of what you can do when you're dealing with employees because right. it's a tough part of yeah. dealing with business. Definitely. That's like one of the hardest things, but I did. Um, you figured it out. I figured it out. Hey. Figured it out. You know, you got to. That's the only choice we got. You know, uh, you just got to keep going. And, 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 you know, and did you ever cry? Oh yeah, girl, I know it. <laughs> sure thing, I cry. I cried every day. <laughs> in a car, cry. I don't even cry. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> they killing me. I don't want to do this no more. <laughs> but that was but God cleaning you God, up, yeah, man. Cleaning you, getting you ready for something yeah, great. Yeah, yeah. So and at, he did. Go ahead. Um. So long story short, car wash the whole nine. And the I ended up filing bankruptcy by twenty one. What? Yeah. Mm. I had to file bankruptcy by 21. How I did was, you feel? Did you feel like a failure? Because okay. you didn't understand it. I didn't understand it. But who told and you you could... Because a lot of people out here, you'd be surprised how many people don't know they can file bankruptcy. They'll yeah. just get up and leave. Yeah, they do. But I filed. Who told you about it? How did you know about I it? Just, a lot of people say, why do you know things? And I really just... I don't know. I'm a studier. So I study, I research, I figure out my options, what it is. And I'm like... White people do it, file in bankruptcy. Donald Trump did it. Right. <laughs> like, okay, that's what you do? Okay, no, but I'm not going to promote that, like, go file bankruptcy. You know, you want to <laughs> try to, you know, clean it, you know, clean it up as best as you can before, you know, it gets to that. But sometimes you can't. I was too far in the hole. I was over $500,000 in debt, so I didn't wow. have no choice at 21. Wow. So when you filed it, how did you end up on the other side of the bankruptcy? On the other you had to go seven years, right, before it could come off your record or something. I hear stories. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's ways to go around that, too. Yeah. Yeah, but, um, yeah, I mean, it gets once it's discharged, you know, people will still lend you things just like you can't buy a house for the first four years, um, or certain things like that. Sometimes, you know, if you, had, if you had properties and you have foreclosures and stuff, it might hold you back a little bit more. But um, it's not the worst thing in the world. You know, right then and there, it felt like the worst thing in the world. I'm like, oh, my gosh, I'm walking into a federal building. I don't know what's going on. These people asking me. They're looking at my statements. I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> I just know I can't afford to pay y'all. Okay? <laughs> they want to hear all the questions. They got questions. Though. Right, they have lots of questions. I didn't expect it. I'm in there by myself. You know, I didn't have no direction. I'm just going with the flow. Did you have but, a mentor of any sort? No, it was just you. Just me. That's all. I like it because that's me. how you grow. Yeah. So as you went through that, you get through that. You 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 kick you kick butt. You now you bankrupt and you kick butt. You done it. Really, it's a blessing. You it's a minor setback for a major it's comeback. comeback yeah. <laughs> so, what happens after you start to get grinded again? What's your next uh, business venture? In between that, I got into alarm. So, right. Oh, at, okay. Yeah, at this point, um, I was working as a sub dealer um, for a company out in Vegas. So, we were doing alarms. Um, that's how I was getting my income streams back. Like, you know, trying to make some money, get my revenue back. You know, bigger picture. Like, okay, get some money under your belt finish school and then once that happened I said okay time to move I'm trying to move where I'm going and God did my vision board I think that January of 2019 and for some reason I had TD Jakes on there oh man and I didn't know but I knew I wanted to be in front of him but I didn't know I was moving to Dallas at this time like Dallas wasn't on the map mm -hmm. um and I I had like speaking a whole bunch of stuff on there that you know I was just like okay there's things I want but I didn't know how it was gonna come about um Fast forward, I, I, I came uh, to his church that that uh, that May of 2019, and I was I visited. I was like, okay, I like it, and I was like, okay, I don't know how I'm gonna get here, but I'm gonna be here by sep August, September, and um, I was here September 13th. I packed up my U-Haul, I drove it, put my car on the back, and just came. And um, I, I the the bankruptcy. <laughs> 
it kind of and then I didn't have a plan because I was like I what happened was the day I was out here trying to find an apartment to get approved the mm-hmm. bankruptcy posted on my credit report Ooh. Really? yes because you know it takes time for yeah. it to hit mm-hmm. and I'm like oh my goodness so the apartment I originally wanted they ended up telling me no because right. they couldn't do it because the bankruptcy was fresh wow. but I have worked with this other one so I'm in the hood I'm on Skillman in Dallas you know hey, y'all got me hey <laughs> Skillman and I deal you yeah, going over there by uh, uh, let me see what's over there it's a chicken place right yeah, there yeah mama's right chicken mama's I was chicken. right across the street you, you hey. right across the street you was at, what was you at the Indigo's what part you was in apartments over there called? I don't know <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I can't remember. I can't think of it. But it, my my address was Audelia Road, so I um. Whatever. I was like, you know what? I, I know I still got to move. This At any rate, you just you you end up you know coming to the Dallas area. Now you 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 this alarm thing. How do you take it to the next level? Okay. How do you push it up? Because you learned it. Of course, the skill set. Yep there but mm-hmm. how did you push how do you push it up so and then that's kind of too why i ended up moving here because the market for that was great so mm-hmm. um because during that time dallas was building up there was new home developments uh when i came out here to visit you know i went and spoke to home builders you know so i could see what my market was and what the competition was um i got an office space out here on Stimmons Freeway. So I went and got a you know, little office space, $300 a month. I was like, okay, I could host my mass hires here. Um, so I just went with it. Um, I had a company that was like, okay, yeah, we'll get licensed, you know, cause I'm still a sub dealer at this point. They, they were willing to get a license out here in Dallas. So I could, you know, run under them. Um, we did that, I built a team. And then I was like, you know what? You know, you got this enough. You, you you got this team going. You making this amount of money. I already know the industry, so I was like, you know, let me look into getting my own franchise. Wow! So, and so you end up getting your own yeah. franchise. Yeah. And how hard was how difficult was that learning that part of it? Because you had already you done screwed the pooch out there in in, in uh, Vegas, so you knew how not to do it wrong. Mm-hmm. So you how did how did you go through learning about franchise? Well, so I was I knew the industry right, but I didn't know being a franchise owner yet. So I still had some learning to do, but I figured it out quickly, very quickly. But, you know, I had the importance of it down. Um, However, you know, I went into it. I originally thought I was going to be a franchise for the original company, the brand I was working for, but it didn't turn out. You know, um, a lot of the they end up cock blocking you. Yeah, of course, because you become the competition. You can't blame them. So this is a dog eat dog yeah. world. You're not just for the go just open a business. They feel like you really still in copying their style, yeah. but really you're not. You're yeah. just trying to grow, and you outgrow things sometimes. Yeah. And, and and I I'm I'm definitely prophetically speaking right now. Yeah. But definitely, you know, when you outgrow situations, it's time to move on now. So basically, how did you end up? So how did you end up doing it? Like like I ended up reaching out to other dealers and. One, they was like, I'm ready. Like, we want you. So, um. And they partnered. I, it was a partnership. No, it's a, I was a franchise for them. Oh, you was a franchise. Yeah, oh, a so franchise. they let you go ahead and. Yeah, for, it's just not the company. You okay. Know? Okay. But I don't want to say specific names, but you know, it wasn't, you know, the, you know, the top alarm company you may know. It was supposed to be that, but it wasn't. So I found mm-hmm. somebody here and I found the company here in, um basically Dallas that would take me on their branch was here and the sales rep and everybody just welcomed with open arms and it was so good and they point me in direction so it's like okay this is where I'm supposed to be is it doing is, is this you still doing it today yes man that's hard yeah so how many years you been in the game now uh four or five years how many franchises have you did any more you we just have four offices four offices yep. wow so um I'm licensed so you, within this you have to get licensed so it's funny the day um, I got licensed for my first franchise, I always like to go back to the story so people know the struggle that you go through and they just don't see, you know, everything. So, mind you, I moved here to Dallas. Um, you know, I have $10,000 saved up and I'm like, I don't have no job. Um, so I'm just like, you know, gonna cover my rent for the rest of the year. I ended up running into some people because I'm always in entrepreneur slip. So I was like, okay, let me, um, it was like a club. This guy, he, he was like, oh, we're going to make some money. Da, da, da. So I gave like my last $3,000. Like, I thought he was like, these boys sick. You, about to, you know that? I know. I didn't know. You know, I'm coming down. I wish I ran into you. I ain't going to lie. I'd have got paid. I'd have got that 10. I'd just, I at least got eight. I know. He got three. Eight. He got <laughs> three. Yeah, but, slick as me. 
They got a little <laughs> three thousand, whatever. You were um, hurt about that. Wasn't I you? was hurt, but you know it is what it is. Stuff happens, and so I ended up becoming behind on bills again. I'm like, oh, so I had to go get a job um, because you know I had my nursing license. So I went, I got a job at Baylor, so I was working as a nurse for a few weeks, getting my income back up, and for um, a few weeks. Yeah. So you quit after a few weeks. Oh yeah, you know entrepreneurship. <laughs> you know, yeah, you gotta make quick. Me and jobs. <laughs> I hope nobody. I hope I don't never got an interview again because they see this. They we not hiring. Because I'm you. not staying long. <laughs> yeah. I just need a paycheck to, <laughs> to you, get me to get back up. Right. Okay. So now you have the audacity to create Blueprint, Blueprint University. University. All right. And and who better to do it than her because of all the things that she's been through. So how did you come about that? Blueprint University. Okay. Let me finish the story because it's good. Oh, okay, I'm Let sorry. Let me tell you, I know I'm talking a lot. But, <laughs> <laughs> you like trying <laughs> Go ahead. I just want to finish the story so people know, like, okay, you, you know, so it makes sense. But pretty much the day that, you know, I had to get licensed for the franchise, um, for me to be able to be a franchise owner, I, I had to go take a test. So they told me the night before, we got a test in Austin. The day before, this is like 3 p.m., he was like, you can be in Austin tomorrow, you can take the test. I ain't studied for this test 100 to Oh, that's test. beast mode. So I had to study this whole prop about the whole alarm industry. I, I don't know how, God, because you I didn't know, know nothing about, it. about this. Like, <laughs> this was you foreign sure somebody to me. didn't just, just no, help you no. out? So I'm nervous. I'm like, oh, my God. I'm like, okay, but I'm going to do it. I went there. I come out the, I come out of my, I come out the test. I'm like, oh, God, I don't know, like, what happened? I looked at my camera and the police is at my door with an eviction notice because now I'm getting evicted from my apartment. Are you serious? Yes. That was story gets deep. And I'm like, God. <laughs> so you still going in. Right. Mm. So then, and then they tell me, okay, you're not going to get the results till later on. So I'm like, okay, I might as well just drive back home and try to figure this out. So anyway, I get back home. I pass the exam. Move forward. I'm like, okay, like God, what's, what's next? Like, what am I going to do? So now I got to get on phone calls, try to make calls so I don't get, you know, put out. And, you know, I had to make it happen. I don't remember exactly the details, but I know I made it happen for a couple of weeks. And then from there on, now I'm licensed, I'm getting everything, and it, it was just be smoke from there. Wow. So now it's like hustle. Like, now you got to grind. You got to get yourself out of this. And, How girl, you just filed bankruptcy. You can't get no eviction on your credit. So <laughs> you, you got to come with it. So that's pretty much that whole story but now fast forward you know i built up four offices it's been no, going but, great so you built all four of these offices I, is you and who how, how big is the team like uh we have so pretty much how it goes so i started off my um my office so we have like about 20 reps so what you do is you do like mass hires weekly you hire sales reps are high over term because you know they see quick money mm -hmm. and then they might not come back so you got to always constantly hire. hire and um so that's pretty much, you know, what you do within that industry. But then you, you the find HR, you you HR too, or you have an HR. No. So you, you know, like now I'm not so fully in it. I have people run it. So, yeah, you know, so now. But how long did you have to take before you got to that stage? Two years, okay. possibly. But it is probably was a little bit quicker because I already knew how to run it because I was running previous mm -hmm. offices while I was in Vegas. Yeah. So it was like I knew what had to be done. Um, if I would have had, you know, the financial power it could have been even faster. Um, so, you know, but pretty much now you just have, you, you find those, your power people who are going to run their offices and now they're running and it's just replicated and it's just residual income from there. Wow, and and how many, I mean, you've seen people's lives change. Yeah. And you've been a part of helping them to change their life. Yeah. And that's great, man, so how do you give back? Um, now that's why I created the Blueprint University. Yeah, I, yeah, I'm coming in yeah, now. You got you getting this money. You got <laughs> yeah. to, you got to give back. So we doing. So I created the Blueprint University um, because now it's like okay, I've been through this whole entrepreneur journey. If I would have had that mentor, like you said, somebody there with me, I probably would have you know made maybe some better decisions, or maybe I would have had more resources or tools. So that's why um, the Blueprint University came about. People have been telling me to do this for years because you know people call my phone all day long. Okay, well, can you do this for me real quick? And I do it like, cause I'm like, oh, I could do this in my sleep, and um, you know, create LLC. I could do that, you know, five minutes. Business credit, you know, I can get you going, all that. Um, so it was just, you know, people were like, well, really, my mom, she was like, you need to just make this a business, cause you know, you're doing all this work for free, mm -hmm. and you know, and I'm like, oh, no, nah. yeah, 
And I'm just like, yeah, I played it off for like a couple, you know, about a year or so. And then I was like, okay, what am I going to call it? So I'm over there coming up with names. I'm like, okay, Blueprint University. Cool. That's a nice name. It's <laughs> a nice name. And I was like, and but now I've been seeing it everywhere. I'm like, Blueprint. So Blue, cliche. Uh, it happens like that. Yeah. Don't trip. You know how many boss talks it is? That, and yeah. they be threatening me too because really? I'm I be blowing up because we go crazy. And yeah. they they be like, oh, you got trademark it. I yeah, trademark yeah, you have to. Mm-hmm. Now, what did what what um? How did you the website? I went on. I looked at it. Was user friendly? Mm-hmm. I mean, how hard was it building your website and just doing everything to get everything prepped up for the business blueprint? You know, it wasn't a overnight thing. So I recently started working with a marketing agency. So shout out to the Ison agency. They did that website and it's amazing. It's it's it, it, it. They do a really good job with that. So um. But prior to that, you know, I hired someone on Viver. So when you're looking at, when you're starting out you and you can't afford, you know, like, right. I can't afford no $5,000 website right now or 4000 whatever it may be, $800. So you go on Viver, I found a guy, he was like, okay, $300. So I'm like, okay, cool, make this website. It was cool, but it wasn't as user-friendly, yeah, like you said. Of course. So it got me to, it, you know, it started up. And because anytime I go into a new business, I start off like I'm a new owner. Because oh, okay. a lot of times... You invest in certain businesses, and then you still you still want to you still want to experience the journey. So you still want to grow. So I wasn't like I wasn't sure exactly where I was going with the Blueprint University. So I'm just like, okay, let me invest. You know, small, play with it. But as I grew, I was like, okay, you can up and start exposing your brand more. So you know, go on Viver, get you a website, have you know some little freelancer put it together, and go from there and just start because that's just gonna it's, that's just your starting point that doesn't mean you have to end there start with a logo if you could create it you got canva now we got all these tools we didn't, i don't think i had that back then when i started no, no. no. well and no it, it, she had it if we had it oh, she i didn't know about it just wasn't it. aware because yeah. we were using it back so, in 2017 that yeah now? okay i just wasn't aware canva was around i, I think uh we used what was that other thing you used to make cards and stuff too Canva might not have been right. It was something like else. Vista Print. Vista Print. Yeah, that's, that's what, what we was around. Vista yeah. Print. I'm sorry. It wasn't Canva. Yeah, I was. I it think was they were around. But you know, now you go in there making flyers and do stuff like that. So you just you know start off like that. But pretty much now, um, Blueprint also can help you with all of that. So okay, we're well, we gonna be. We, I'm gonna try it out. I might just try it for the hell of it because I know. If you do me wrong, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell your family you ain't worth yeah. a dime down there right. in Texas. Okay. I'm gonna I'm come on here and do it though. I like I like my reputation. So. Okay, so you will do me a good yeah. job. Hold me accountable. No, no, <laughs> I, I definitely am gonna try to reach out to you on some things just to see. You know, we be I be trying to check what or other people test tell the waters. Yeah. yeah, see what other people. If somebody lying, I just test it up against each other because we deal with so many different people. Yeah, and you, you experience that, so it's like. You go here, you go there. Some people they don't produce what you think they're gonna produce. So it's it's a like you said, doggy dog world. You just gotta test the waters and find out what works for you. How how so, um how how um how can people get a hold of you? Um, you can visit my website blueprintuniversity.com. dot um, My Instagram is Kayla's Blueprint K A I L A S Blueprint. Um, yeah, you can contact you, me on social media. Did you get a uh? Uh, brick and mortar for it yet? Or? Oh, I'm working on that. So I'm working on a co-working space, 30,000 square feet out here in Dallas. It's coming soon. Just, you know, finishing up the details of it. But at this um, location, you'll have a co-working space. We have a tax company that we did very well this year. Um, so we're going to be specializing in corporate taxes. So all the business owners that, you know, need proof for their finances and stuff like that, just come, um, come there get your taxes done we also um, i'm gonna have podcast studios in there so that people that want to do podcasts they can come and record and then um youtube youtube rooms um event space so if you want to host a seminar or an event for your business you'll be able to do that as well wow so. she she just spend that bread yeah. mm-hmm. trying, to, trying to trying to get she's people. trying to flip it oh she flip she gonna flip it man she already figured it out uh donald trump uh lost all his money and got it back <laughs> yeah <laughs> A few times. <laughs> a few times. So I guess that's just a part of it. Like, um, if uh, um, you know, if God forbid something was to happen and you wasn't uh, able to speak and you weren't able to speak in your own behalf and somebody was doing a documentary on you, what would you want them to say most? Mm, I don't know. That's weird. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. She was a great 
he, she, I was, you know, a, a giver. You know, I have a really big heart. So I really give a lot. I'll give the last. I mean, sometimes, you know, if I had $25, I would give you my last $20. Wow. And have five dollars. So that's just the I'm person I'm definitely I am. your friend. I'm gonna be asking for that twenty. You can keep the five. It's going right. down. Right. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much you. for coming on the show, man. All we right, love you, man, you. Kayla. Man, we appreciate you for coming, man. I hope you guys get some out of this. It's not our last time on the show. She will be coming back and educating people on finances. It's something that me and her will be doing from time to time so we yeah. can figure this out, man. So people can grow and understand that they can make it. Our people need this, man. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hey, for man. Me. Listen, man, it's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101 where the bosses talk. And we out.